Let's head overseas now for the first time tonight. And this week, a missile hit Poland and killed two farmers. It's a NATO nation, of course, the consequences of which could have been catastrophic for all of us. Conflicting reports as to where it came from, initially thought to be of Russian origin, now potentially Ukrainian. An investigation is underway, and for the latest, I'm joined by the chair of the Warsaw Security Forum, Poland's Katarzyna Pisarska. Uh, Katarzyna thank you so much for your time. I'll start by asking you, the missile that did kill two Polish farmers, what's the latest intelligence on where it came from? Of course, the investigation is only starting. We have invited both uh, NATO partners and Ukraine to be part of that investigation. I think it's going to be critical to find out exactly what happened and how it happened. Uh, but at this moment, uh, nothing uh, um, that we know would say that there was any intention of any side for this missile to fa uh, fall into Polish and uh, by extension to NATO territory. President Zelensky was adamant immediately that it did not come from his country. Was that a surprising response to you? We are a bit surprised for him to, to have such uh, definite statements at such early a stage uh, of uh, the, let's say, investigation. Uh, we did not know. Uh, of course, we do have radars. I'm sure that uh, that uh, some of the NATO allies, including the United States, had pretty quickly understood where this missile has been coming from. But again, it preferred to wait to full investigation. Uh, I don't think President Zelensky, uh, you know, uh, again, uh, uh, acted uh, very wisely at that moment. I think he acted emotionally at that very moment. And then he, uh, in the next uh, day, actually took a step back and said that it really needs a full investigation and it cannot be said that this was not uh, part of the uh, Ukrainian uh, missile defense system that fell into Polish uh, ground. So I, I think it was more emotions uh, uh, than it was really the full knowledge of of what happened. And we can understand that. I mean, imagine that your country has been hit by 100 missiles. And instead of uh, focusing on the fact that you had, you know, human casualties and infrastructural casualties, and also the fact that Ukrainian anti-missile defense was able to uh, catch almost 80% of these missiles, which is a huge success. You're trying to focus on that. And then all of a sudden, you know, uh, somebody tells you, well, actually, you hit somebody else. I think, again, it was it was a very tense day, a very difficult day. Ukraine was under attack from all sides. Uh, and uh, and I think, you know, uh, again, there was no uh, malintent on the uh, on the side of Zelensky trying to say, it's not us, it's Russia. At the end of the day, it is Russia. I mean, had the Russians not uh, sent 100 missiles that day, there would be no collateral damage, yes? Uh, so, so at the end of the day, it's very clear here in Poland who is the perpetrator who's uh, uh, really uh, to be blamed for this uh, incident. It's really interesting, this, this whole issue of intent with the missile. People are still dying regardless of whether there was intent or not. What would it take for NATO to get involved in this war? Well, it would take an intentional attack from Russia. So if we had proof that Russia actually attacks uh, in a variety of ways, yes, uh, the territory of NATO, uh, whether it be Eastern flank or other countries, uh, I think that uh, would uh, mean, well, I know that would mean we would be in, in war with Russia. But again, we have no indication uh, that Russia is uh, trying to do that. On the contrary, uh, our analysis is that Russia cannot afford to have uh, a full um, uh, war uh, with NATO countries. We are over four times bigger in terms of military capacity, well, even more with the United States, of course. Uh, but uh, also, I mean, Russia hardly can right now uh, sustain its presence on the occupied territory in Ukraine. Has support from the people of Poland wavered a little bit, given that their own people are now losing their lives? Our societies fully understand uh, the danger uh, of, of withdrawing support for Ukraine because we understand we're next. 
Yes, if Russia takes over Ukraine, let's not uh, be naive. It will not stop there. Had it succeeded in Ukraine, it would be emboldened. Uh, it would be still a very strong army. So in a way, Ukrainians have uh, have protected us, yes, and they will continue to protect us. So, so th this resolve will not change in this part of the world. What we worry, however, about is whether it will uh, change in the NATO on another NATO state, which is the United States of America. I always say that our, there's actually only three sides that can end this war. It can be Russia if it withdraws because it started the war. It can be Ukraine if it wants to stop fighting. And it can be the United States if it stops financing the war. Katarzyna, thank you so very much for your time. Look forward to chatting to you again at another point. Thank you, and it's my pleasure.